flying on Emirates makes it feel like you're not flying that long. Yeah, <laughs> it's a wonderful airline. <laughs> so, I mean, I know you've worked a lot with people with, with illnesses in the past, like Conor Mahalik. You've been put a spotlight on people dealing with disabilities, both intellectual and physical. So what does it mean for you to come here and be with the Special Olympics and WG's partnership? So it, it's incredible to me because it feels like every time I do something like this, I learn more and more, right? Mm -hmm. So um, when you look at all of these opportunities as not only um, ways to educate people outside, but also to educate yourself, it becomes uh, pretty important. Awesome. Like, I didn't realize. So, when you look at the Special Olympics and their mission to help people with intellectual disabilities and include them in society, like, okay, that's wonderful. But then you hear about the health aspect of it, of like, and they, they talk to me about, like, actually, that's one of our broader goals is to, you know, they do health screens for these for these kids. And, you know, they just told an amazing story about an Egyptian kid who didn't realize that he only had 50% of his vision. Mm -hmm. And he comes in and they're, they're like, you just, there's something wrong with your vision. He's like, no, there's not. Actually, yes, there is. They give him glasses and he can see for the first time because a lot of doctors, when they're dealing with people with intellectual disabilities, aren't trained to identify some of these things, you know, and how that, how much that changes their lives. And uh, just to be a part of that and to um, be able to support that is incredible. So what are you able to do when you... When you meet with these kids, are today recognize you? Are you able to? So, oh my gosh, your role? I so I thought I you know I thought like okay you know I'm here as an ambassador with WWE mm -hmm. right you know so I'm an I'm an ambassador with WWE so it's good for media stuff right for me to be here but I don't know how much because I always underestimate the global power of WWE because <laughs> because I I tend to think small right I like uh, uh, and so. I underestimate that. And so when I went out onto the basketball court, all of a sudden, this young lady comes over, yeah, yes, yes. And then the whole basketball team was around me and wanting pictures and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? And so, uh, so I did that. And then I played a basketball game. One of the things that they do. So one of their big messages is inclusion including people with intellectual disabilities into into stuff and one of the great ways of doing that is through sport right so like i know for myself if i'm going to a new area one of the best ways for me to make friends is to go do jujitsu because sport brings you in close contact with people and makes you realize that despite uh outer appearances or whatever that you're actually more similar than you are different but so uh so after this experience with the girls who then immediately after doing this they were going to play a game and i was like oh i thought we were going to do so, a little warm-up together but then i went and, and played a game with the guys and played a game of basketball i haven't played a game of basketball and i don't know how long and it <laughs> and it was and it was fun you know what i mean and so getting actively involved in that you know is is just incredible yeah i mean are you Obviously, you're talking about how you're not really aware of WWE's fame. I know you're also a person who... What's your relationship like with your own fame? I know it's not usually what you focus on. In uh, yeah. Uh, I have weird thoughts about my fame, but it changes. Like, it evolves over time. So, I, there was a long time... So, I would, did an interview, and I forget where it was, and the interviewer just looked at me and he goes, I feel like you feel guilty about your success. And nobody had ever pointed that out to me before. And I think like that that's very true. Um, but I have a lot of really smart friends and people around me and all that kind of stuff who like try to encourage me as far as like, hey, uh, you can use that to improve the world. Like, because part of me in my life, there have been times in my life where I'm like, despite, so I love wrestling. It's really weird. It's like a really weird fascination with this thing we call wrestling, right? So I love it. But there have been times where I'm just like, what am I doing with my life? There's so many problems and I need to be going out and like changing, changing the world. But it's, so, okay, if I wanted to tackle climate change, right? So I know a little bit about climate change, but the people who are actually working on it, I would have to put in like 20 years of hard studying just to get where these people already are. Mm -hmm. So one of the better things that I could do is bring attention to these issues, right? And so that is kind of a, 
I don't know, when my, when one of my friends specifically is very into being like, hey, you can change, but if you're talking about division of labor and what you can do that would benefit the world the most, it might not be actually doing it, like going out there and doing climate science, it might actually be doing like, hey, bringing attention to it. And so uh, the fame, getting back to your original question, allows you to do more than you could if you don't have it. But sometimes it's really hard for me because I don't like all the attention and my wife has two reality shows and a YouTube channel and then WWE follows me around. <laughs> so it's like... <laughs> so and Instagram. Yeah, and Instagram. Well, I, I stay, my wife pressures me to do social media. <laughs> She's like, you really need to do more social media. We need to take advantage of this and you need to use this platform to do... Um, to educate people about the things that you care about. And I'm like, yeah, I know, but I hate social media. <laughs> so, so yeah, I have a weird, weird thing with it. Yeah, and obviously you have, John is a, a part of your life as well in the family, and he's a person who's also very much not just about changing the world in a, in a macro sense, but very much individuals, you know, who he mm-hmm. meets with, the kids mm-hmm. that he's able to affect people's lives. Mm-hmm. So do you feel responsibility in that way too, I mean, especially with something like this? Uh, yes, and I, I also feel the responsibility of being a good role model, and when you meet, meet with kids not feeling, so one of the things that's really hard is meeting with, with kids and, um, and making them feel that they're important, right, to, to you and to that everything that they're going through is just as important as everything that everybody else is going through and so uh i think that that's an important thing for me is when i connect with with kids like connor and that sort of thing is that like hey dealing with them as individual like working with them as individuals like some people i know it's hard because schedules get so busy and all this kind of stuff like okay I need to go do this thing or whatever but with WWE they do a great job of like here here's an individual with a problem and they really look up to you and so we get to go and take their mind off of some of their problems for a little bit and I think that that's I don't know for a long time I also felt guilty about being a part of entertainment because I feel like it's very selfish selfish industry right like okay why do you want to dress up in spandex tights and go out and play fight with people Mm. and uh because it's fun (laughs) and i love it uh but how is that benefiting the world Uh, i i don't know but doing more things like that makes me feel like i do have a little bit of i am benefiting the world in a little bit a little bit you know so well, back to the selfish aspect. Yeah. Obviously, wrestling is a huge passion. Yes. You want to get back in the ring. Yes. I, I think you last put it at something like 20% that you get back it, for WWE. WWE. Yeah, yeah. I think that's... Is it still in, at 20%? I think it's increased, but I don't know by how much. So, I, as of today, I'm still not cleared by WWE. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've been working very hard to work with their doctors as far as like, hey... What do you guys need to see from me to show that I'm okay, right? Send me to any doctor that you want. Send me to any doctor in the country. You can send me to any doctor in the world. I don't care. Like, as far as concussions and brain health and all that kind of stuff, send me to any doctor that you want, and I'll, I'll see them. And if they, if they don't clear me, then I'm okay. With, like, I'm okay with somebody saying, like, hey, because of this or this or this, we're not going to clear you. But when everybody else has cleared me, and then you don't clear me, then that's where I'm like, I don't, I don't understand. So, but I think I'm, I'm getting closer. And I'm, one of the things that I really respect about Dr. Uh, Joseph Maroon is that when he's been sent, he's the head of medical with WWE. And when he sent me, his opinion is that I should not wrestle. Mm-hmm. And uh, when he has sent me to doctors, he could easily send me to doctors who would just verify his own opinion. But he doesn't. He says, these are the people that I think are the best people in the country. And I'll send you to them. And so, so far, every person he sent me to has cleared me. And so, whether or not that ends up being me getting cleared by WWE, or if it's still a thing where it's like, I'm sorry, we still don't feel comfortable clearing you, I don't know. Like, I would imagine that if I don't get cleared by WrestleMania, I probably won't get cleared. So It's um, coming up. I mean, you've been saying that for a while. Now we're here. Now we're here. And yeah, and it's... uh, 
And, and, that's, and I think that's the hard part is that we're less than four weeks away now. I think maybe we're, now we're three weeks away yeah. today. And, um, and, and it's truer than ever. And I'm still not cleared. And, the, you know, that does weigh heavy on my shoulders, right? Because that means a lot as far as if I don't get cleared, my contract is up in September. And then what that means from there. And also what that means is my wife has, like, her business is so inter- intertwined with WWE, right? It's not like I can just, like, say, hey, guys, thank you very much for everything that you've done for me over the last several years. But I'm going to part ways with you and I'm going to go do my own thing. It's like, okay, guys, I'm going to part ways with you, but your cameras are still going to be following me and my wife around. Uh, and so, you know, it's just, you know, all that, all that kind of thing. And if I do end up leaving, it's uh, leaving people that I've known for years before I even was with WWE. But there's also some exciting things about that, too. So it's, um, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I would say the chances of me getting cleared by WWE have risen, but I don't know to what, what percent, you know, so. Yeah. But how fulfilling has it been for you in, I guess, the last year or so since Talking Smack ended? How have you enjoyed your, your in, I mean, obviously you're not in the ring, mm-hmm. but have you enjoyed, you know, the general manager? Uh, I go up and down with it. So <laughs> uh, part, of, part of me sometimes is just like, what am I doing here? Right. Like mm. I just rather be I, what's really hard for me is because my passion with wrestling. So a lot of fans love the rock. Right. Yeah. Like they loved when they grew up, they loved watching the rock and yeah, they I loved, love action figures. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, yeah, let, you know, uh, smell what the rock is cooking and all that kind of stuff. I was always like, oh, get me past these long interview segments. I want to see the wrestling. I like the Dean Malenko. Right. Which is like if. They're complete opposite ends of the spectrum, you know? And so I got better at talking because it was a requirement for the job. That's not my passion. My passion is the in-ring stuff. And so doing the GM stuff is like, it's been good in the sense that it has helped me learn how to become a better talker, but it's not necessarily something I'm passionate about. So whereas, so, uh, I forget what's the lady's name who wrote Eat, Pray, Love. Um, Matt oh, Gilbert. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so she wrote another book, which I forget what it's called, but I I read that and really liked it. And what she said is, every job has a bad part, right? Like being a writer, like a lot of people want to be writers because they just think the writing part, but it's not just the writing part. It's writing and then submitting it to somebody and then have somebody tear apart your writing that you've spent two years writing this book and them telling you that it's not good and then to do it all over again and then to submit it again. And that's the people who are successful at writing put up with the parts that are really hard. You know, there's parts about being a wrestler that are really hard. Like sometimes the travel, the constant, you know, the constant grind of the travel and all that kind of stuff. And as a wrestler, I was very good at putting up with the parts that are very hard because I love the wrestling so much. Putting up with the parts that are really hard when you're doing the part that you don't like (laughs) isn't as easy, you know? So, uh, so yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on being GM. Yeah. I mean, we got to cut it. Last one. one. I mean, it's just interesting when you have this relationship with that skill, that talent of yours, you know, your ability to connect with the audience. And obviously you're not using it right now in the way that you want, but mm-hmm. that never goes away. Mm-hmm. You know, all eyes are always going to be on you. Your ability to get people behind you mm-hmm. is just always going to be there. And so it, it, I, I find it interesting just you're disinterested in, it in a certain way. Yeah, yeah. It's um, my disinterest in a lot of things that yeah. other people think are important are uh, sometimes... <laughs> We talk about inclusion sometimes make me feel very separate from people, you know, mm-hmm. like uh, especially people in the entertainment industry. Um, so, so yeah, like the, it's interesting. I would love to be able to talk with somebody who would be like, hey, because of these skills that you've acquired and these skills that you seem to have, here's how you could use them to make the world better. Mm-hmm. And as opposed to just being like, hey, you can make these stories better on SmackDown Live. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, I think that's part of, the, part of the issue is that, like, when I go out and I do something, it's like, okay, um, people feel connected and it does this. Uh, but what is, 
what's the end of that? What's the goal of that? If the goal is not um, to do either something that I'm passionate about or to do something that betters causes that I care about or betters the world even betters the world in a thing that I that I don't care about right like mm-hmm. you know if it betters the world in this sort of way then okay I see the point but if it's just there's no la- in this world there's lack of a lot of things there's you know some people don't have access to clean drinking water uh, some people don't have access to a ton of food or that sort of thing uh, access to entertainment in first world countries there's not a lack of entertainment. In fact, there's so much entertainment. We were just talking about this before you walked in. So, do you know how many times people come, because I don't watch much television, people come up to me and they say, hey, have you seen such and such a show? And I say, no, I haven't. You need to watch it. <laughs> do I? Do I really? Like, and that's, they say that for 15 different shows yeah. because there's so much great entertainment out there. Like everybody's, all these different places are producing such great entertainment there's no lack of entertainment right um and so so yeah so to use a skill of connecting with people and how i do that i have no idea like i i don't know how why that happens but to use that skill to just create more entertainment that isn't particularly fulfilling to me isn't necessarily like uh, I don't care, right? Yeah. <laughs> so like, but if somebody could point me in the direction of, hey, you have this specific skill, maybe you should do this with it, or here's an avenue where you could really like, help people with it, or do this, or do that, and then I would be uh, much more engaged, I think, in the process. Yeah. Is September 23rd the day? No, no, no. It's actually, it's actually funny. Yeah, I had somebody say that to me on my Twitter. It's like, does your contract run out on September 23rd? And I was like, how do people even know that? But no, my contract actually runs out September 1st, which is actually the day of the All In show. Mm-hmm. And it, but it's funny because it, it doesn't, that doesn't compute. You know, like, <laughs> like you're, like, so, because people, gosh, I was, in the, I was at the Bahrain Comic Con um, the last two days, and we did Q&As. And every, like, each one they asked me about that. Are you going to be at all in? I was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> but, like, uh, but, yeah, it's, um, it, so, so, yeah, my contract is up in it's September 1st. But that said, before this goes any further, I also think I would like to promote a few things, which is I'm really excited about. And I think, I don't know if I'm coming or not, but I'm crossing my fingers that I am coming to the show in Saudi Arabia on the 27th, on April 27th, because I think, um, so WrestleMania is a big event, right? Obviously yeah. the biggest event of the year for us. I think historically the show on the 27th might end up being more important if you look back at where WWE ch- WWE's trajectory goes and our influence on the region and all that kind of stuff. I think that uh, it's really cool that we're having such a big show in a stadium in Saudi Arabia with them behind it because that could be a shift to more shows in the region where we obviously have a huge fan base. And so um, when you look at like, okay, WrestleMania, yeah, it's huge and I don't want to dismiss that at all. But I think what we're doing in Saudi Arabia and doing it, it you can tell it's at a, they're doing it on a, like this isn't like a, hey, we're just doing a show in Saudi yeah. Arabia. It's like doing a 50 person Royal Rumble match that's bringing everybody from both brands is one, it's a huge expense, but it also shows how much we're putting into it. And that means how much Saudi Arabia is putting into it. And if it's really successful, how much that means that we'll be in the region more, which is just, I don't know. I think it's super cool. It is super cool. And for selfishly, as I'm here, yeah, I would like this to have as much as possible. They got a 10 year deal. So yeah, yeah. we'll be back many times more. Yeah, absolutely. Well, pleasure speaking with you. Yep. Thank you very much.